Hello everyone and welcome to this playthrough for the Rookie Division in the Origin Links tournament. The video is sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic and we're going to start directly. Here you can see hole number one and we're going to play with the Viper here. We do have 4.4 in win playing with a Marlin Ball, which means that we do not have any extra distance. We're going to line up in the rough here, slightly, slightly to the left of the pin. We're going to go with two and a half rings. And two and a half rings is an over adjustment due to as we are playing downhill. And we're going with one and a half bar of backspin and that is the amount of spin that is required when it comes to the rough bump. And the reason we know that is because I played this hole uh, yeah, hundreds of times. The problem we get here with this shot is that we do have the side spin. We need to take away the side spin if we're going to over adjust this hole while uh, playing it so our opponent go in the going to try to go in the rough as well if you don't feel comfortable by doing that then you can bounce it over to the green but i would say if you are going to go for an holy one the rough bump there is definitely the way to play the hole also just need to add that you can see in the description down below here on this video that uh, that you have direct time links to the, all the certain holes so if you for an example do need help with one specific hole and don't want to watch the whole video then you can just press that link you can go to that specific hole but of course i hope you stay it here through it all we get it kind of close our opponent just goes a bit unlucky into the rough there but that was hole number one so we're going to go to hole number two now and hole number two is going to be a par five we often we do not that often get a par five that early in the tournament you usually get on like hole number three or something like that but i take that it's always good to start off with uh with an uh, with an eagle but this is a tough one to make an eagle on and the reason why is first and foremost we're playing this one downhill you can play on the right side but that way kind of fool you a little bit because sure it's an easier drive but you will have a almost an impossible time to reach for the green in two we do want and need to play on that fairway patch just down there as you can see our opponent is playing from we do need to have a ball with distance we do need a ball with side spin and also if we do have a strong crosswind we do need to have a driver with some curl i would consider this one to be necessary to have a little bit of curl with nonetheless though uh, as to just not be that close to the rough the problem many players will get is that they under adjust this shot as again it's played downhill we need to over adjust so okay we're going to go with a titan here we're going to give ourselves uh, the room here with our shot to play uh, to the right we're going to just go by the edge of the rough there you see max side spin max top spin we want the wrestle to be uh, us rolling in between the rough and the bunker up front and you're going to see the wrestle here just in a bit the tree's in our way so we need to change around and then we just need to eyeball it just a little bit uh, and we go with three rings which is adjusting for seven miles per hour as our extra mile is 2.4 miles per hour per ring so get that bounce and we roll this one exactly how we want it it's a it's a hard drive to do but it's absolutely necessary to do that drive otherwise you will not be able to reach for the green in two our opponent here as you can see going into the rough will have no chance to reach for the green in two and therefore again this is definitely a hole where many players will drop uh, uh, drop a birdie instead of an eagle uh, on, uh, on this time and that will benefit you that know how to play this hole and will give you yourself that advantage over your opponent for the second shot we do need distance and yes we have the titan still but we do want to have a big dog here the big dog gives us distance and as you can see even if we stretch our club out we can't reach to the end of that fairway uh, we're going to go with a little bit more than one ring so approximately around one and a half rings with this adjustment just to make sure that we're reaching over to the green max side spin to the right combined with one bar of top spin and the top spin is my, may not be required to use 
but I like to use it to get myself a bit more control to at least give myself an option to get to the green. And also, even if I would be cutting the rough, I will roll down a little bit and have no problem to ship my ball in. This green is kind of funny in the way that if you go short to the green and have a wedge, then that wedge is going to be so, yeah, have such a high ball guideline, and it's going to be very, very tough for you to adjust that one properly, especially if you do have crosswind. Our opponent here is going to reach the green here as well, and as you can see, he went through the trees. And that is possible on the right side there of the trees, but it's not possible more to the left. So have that in mind while playing that those trees are in play, uh, at, at least when you go and play a little bit more to the left than our opponent was doing. We pot it in, we take the eagle, we're going to be happy. Hole and number three now, and now it's time to reach for the green. This is one of two part fours where I do believe it's necessary for you to reach for the green in one if you do have the wind for it. We're going to have a titan here to give ourselves the distance for it. It's absolutely possible to play with another ball, but in general it's always better to give yourself that room with distance so you don't have to maybe max overpower your shot. But now with having headwind, sorry with sidewind, then we're going to play this one max overpower as the the way you know in a way for us to hit the ball perfect while max overpowering it's going to be very hard and we need to count for what will happen if i do hit my ball great while overpowering go a little bit too long still we could have taken away a little bit of overpower but we rolled past the green uh, get the rough to stop our ball speed and then we're going to ship it in from uh, from uh, there, from the fringe there, and have no problem uh, whatsoever to make that eagle. If you're not having the glove for it, and uh, then you need to play yourself up safe. You can either go way out to the left there as our opponent is going, or you can bounce it over the bunker that is in the middle and give you yourself an open shot towards the pin. The reason I do not suggest to go with that if you do have tailwind is again that you should be able to go for it when you have an eagle opportunity. An extra eagle here would definitely help you. If not having the distance of your club, use a big topper that do have more topspin so then you counter the, uh, the loss of distance with topspin instead to be able to reach over towards the green. So let's get that eagle and some booms and we go to hole number four. So, just a quick recap here actually before we turn off the hole number four. Uh, tailwind, sidewind, then it's possible to reach over. Headwind, it's a big no, 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 uh, in my opinion. Because then you put the water in play big time. And also, again, it's not the easiest shot in the world to have to overpower to reach for the green. With tailwind, you don't have to overpower if you do have a driver like the extra mile level five. But... And nonetheless, it's possible to make an eagle on this hole. Hole at number four now, and this is a hole that I really, really love. We're going to go with one and a half bar of topspin. I want two bars of topspin, but we don't have the club for it. Going with one bar of side spin to the right, we do want to use the right side of the green. 5.2 with a viper when we are in minimum distance is going to be two rings approximately. Uh, and we're going to adjust for that as well. We slightly have to over adjust this one as we are playing downhill. Uh, we are hitting the rough there, roll out, and we get, as you can see, a straight line towards the pin for a possible hole in one. So, you know, this is a hole where we will be seeing a lot of hole in ones. And the reason for that is if you play on the right side of the green, then you do have a path with. Uh, when the ball is rolling towards the pin that is going to basically be straight up. If you use the left side of the green, then you do have a push. You can see there on that skinny part of the green, you do have a push towards the right side for from the green, which will make you miss your shot to the right side of the hole every single time. So have that in mind while uh, when doing this shot, because you can make it harder than it looks, and our opponent, of course, uh, do, uh, 
do make it a little bit harder. Have in mind again, use the rough, don't use anything else and get that hole in one. So hole number five, everyone. Hole number five is going to be a par five. Another tough par five. I would consider the par fives in this tournament be the toughest ones. Um, and when we compare it to the par threes and tar par four. So it's definitely going to be possible to drop shots here in uh, on a par five that lose shots. Uh, we are going to play with a Titan ball. The reason for that is that we do need distance for our second shot. Uh, we are kind of elaborating here if we're going to go with our wood club to play ourselves up front or we are going to go with our driver. We decide to go with our driver as we do have that straight tailwind. Also, that we do have an, a good way with the backspin here to actually let us stay there on the fairway. If you are not having the distance for this shot, I would consider going, as you could see me, adjusting for the big dog just in the beginning of this, uh, this hole. Uh, I would go with my driver, max topspin, max sidespin to the right and put myself in approximately the same situation as we're doing now. We did adjust it for two rings, which was a little bit more than uh, than we should be doing. Uh, but in the end, uh, we do need to count for that. But all the green of point holes is basically played downhill, which means that the ball will be affected more by the wind. Our opponent here is going with, uh, I think it's a Patriot ball, labor, do labor ball, something like that, which is similar to a Kingmaker, but just with less side spin. Getting there in a good situation there as well, but now we do need distance. We are going to pull out the big dog and go to the green. We do want to have a wood club with a lot of curl and we do want uh, distance. That is the two abilities that we are looking for when we choose the wood club for this hole. We're going to play this one on the left side of the tree. They're going to go with just, just a tiny little bit of backspin combined with max side spin to the right. And now we're going to use the curl after adjusting for this shot. We're going to go with one ring in adjustment. And then we're going to go max curl. And the only thing that we kind of want to focus on is to get this ball to the green. Because again, it's a very, very tricky shot and you need a, little, a fortune of luck to be able to get this one to an albatross. But we come in here and have definitely an, um, a situation where we will be putting in for an easy eagle. The thing that uh, we will see players do is to go, as you can see the trees there, uh, just there where the Volga line cuts one of the trees. The uh, tree there in the middle, the brown tree, you will be able to play over that one if you are going short. Now our opponent is trying something impossible, which is go through a tree that is in play. And that is the problem with uh, with that shot is that the trees are very much in play and if you're just a slightly off then you're going to cut the trees and uh, not going to be able to reach for the green in two. So that is why I do value going on the left side with some curl to be the better way as you will not benefit when it comes to playing over the trees for the albatross. So we're going to come to the uh, second part four where it's highly possible to reach for the green in two and I would say that it's a must to reach for this green in two and make an eagle. Going to go in max top spin on our extra mile which is going to be four and a half bar combined with two bars of side spin to the right. We're going to want to uh, make our ball to bounce in the rough there on top and the reason we're using a mauling ball is to reduce our distance of our club. As would be going with a kingmaker or a titan we would be having too much of, the, of power on our ball and then we will be in between clubs. We're going with three rings here as we are in minimum distance. Uh, we go with three rings to over adjust our shot just a little bit as it's going to be affected a little bit more by the wind. We get it to bounce there in the rough and we roll out on the green. The thing to have in mind in this hole is that uh, you need to think about how the ball will react after the bounce. If you do have sideways like we are having now, then we can uh, kind of count with a realistic bounce, which will be according to how the ball guideline is showing. If we're having headwind, we need to have in mind that the ball guideline will be compressed, which means that we will lose distance with our first bounce. So therefore, we need to use more topspin 
than our normal adjustant to be able to reach for the green in the same type of way. If we're having tailwind, then our ball guideline will be extended, which means that we need to reduce the amount of topspin that we do have to be able to uh, get the same type of result that we are looking for. So, this was hole number six. Get in the hole for that eagle. That is a must. So, our opponent here is going to try, and this is the, uh, the problem, uh, of course, that you can find yourself in if going in the rough or in the bunker then it's going to be a tough one to make an eagle but no uh, no matter where you're going to place here on this particular hole you're definitely going to have a good time to be able to reach uh, reach and make an eagle so the toughest part three one of the tougher holes in the tournament and we're going to go in max side spin combined with warm bar top spin this hole can be played in so many different ways and i would kind of suggest that if you are spot on with your adjustment then you can go with the rough bump here i'm going to show that in a later tutorial as well i'm going to go with two and a half rings with our big dog give ourselves that a little bit more room as we're playing downhill slight amount of curl against the wind and we want the side spin here combined with the top spin to put ourselves uh, on there on the green and roll towards the pin could have gone with one and a half bar of topspin as well to give ourselves that a uh, little bit more distance that we do get with the topspin uh, to go for the holy one i don't like on a part three to go short because that means that we didn't get uh, didn't give our ball the chance to drop for an holy one so as i said we can play this one in many different ways we can play it left side right side rough bump or we can play it as we did with our wood club hard to show every single way uh, and of course the win that we're going to have in the tournament is going to decide how we're going to play it and uh, if if you're having this type of win that we're playing with now then we're going to go with our wood club um, just before the bunker there and give ourselves at least an easy birdie while rolling uh, when rolling uh, rolling that one to the green so three more holes to go here in this playthrough we're going to go to hole number seven hole number number seven and hole number seven is going to be uh, a par if i'm not uh, mistaken par four of course sorry hole number uh, hole number eight of course oh my god i'm um, i was thinking about something else Hole number eight here, and this one you can play two ways. Uh, if you are having um, a club, a short arm and a long arm with a good amount of backspin, I would say max backspin, which is the Thorn, for an example, with uh, with a short arm and an upgraded Saturn, then I would be playing straight forward and go for a good opportunity to ship it in for an eagle. If not, then we need to play ourselves up short. As you can see here on our adjustment with the extra mile, we can play ourselves up short there, going with a wood club towards the pin. But we're going to play ourselves up straight. That's to show that we don't need any top spin, any back spin. We're still going to roll there up top. The problem we have is that we are not having the thorn. We are having the hornet, which means that we are playing this one in the wrong way uh, due to the first thing that I actually explained when this hole started. So. Our opponent here is going to of course try to go not of course but he's going to try to go the same type of way that we are doing and again if you're not having the short iron or the long iron with a very very good amount of backspin play up short use the wood club that you feel most comfortable with and go the short way towards the pin sure it kind of limits the opportunity uh, for an eagle but in the end, you secure the birdie and, and not uh, putting yourself in a situation like we are going to have now. So look at this now. Being in between clubs, we're not having any type of club that is suitable for this type of situation. Sure, we're going to use the top spin that we do have on our Hornet instead of the backspin that we do have on the backbone. Because the backspin on the backbone will still give us a long pot and we always need to find ourselves a way where we can... Uh, make this uh, shot to drop so i'm going to try the rough bump here it's definitely not uh, a way that is um, that is common to play with but the reason we play it is that we find ourselves in a tricky position and that's why it's very important to show this hole number eight here because in the end uh, we are going to give ourselves uh, a very very tough situation to reach for uh, for the green in um, not reach for the green but make it drop 
from distance. So, uh, our opponent here is going to be in the rough, and this is the risk that you do take by going there up top, is that if you put yourself in the rough, then you need to be very, very accurate and also have a rough iron with a good amount of backspin. So, again, the hole can be played in, in different ways, uh, so have that in mind while going into this hole. Kind of decide before how are you going to play this hole. Are you going to lay up short or, or are you going to go a bit further up with more backspin on your clubs? You do not want to end up in the same situation like our opponent did, which is in the water. And that is highly possible, especially if you don't have a game plan while going into this hole. So, last but not least, we go to hole number 9 in the Origin Lynx tournament and we end up with, um, with a very, very tough eagle, uh, very, very tough hole for making the green in two. And therefore also a very tough hole to make the eagle. We are going to, uh, um, you are going to witness here uh, an approach where we are actually going to lay up and, and I'm going to talk a bit about the reason uh, why because you know uh, when going into this hole we need to have in mind that this is a hole where we need to have tailwind on our second shot to be able to bounce over the bunker or use the rough to get to the green in two so if the wind is anything else than tailwind then we can't reach for the green in two okay then we have that in mind so how would we do uh, would we then approach this type of hole then we need to play it very conservative. Don't go with any type of overpower, just play yourself up short. Because if you reach over the bunker there on the right, or if you reach shorter than the bunker there on the right, you're still going to be po uh, possible for you to lay up for a shipping for an eagle. We're going to adjust here with our extra mile, and we're going to go with one and a half rings and max top spin combined with max side spin. As you will be able to see, even though I do, I do have headwind, I'm not going to uh, overpower this one anything because I do want to limit the, uh, limit the risk of going into the rough or into the bunker there. Therefore, I'm not overpowering to give myself more control of my drive. We land up there very nicely and from this distance, we do need to have some tailwind. Otherwise, we will not be able to reach for the green in two. And as you can see, we're going to have side wind. And then we're not going to be able to reach. So, again, our opponent is having a beginner wood. And of course, with a beginner wood, you are not going to be able to play that many good shots. But while choosing a wood club, choose a club with as much uh, distance as possible. The big dog is perfect in this situation. Uh, uh, or... A horizon would work as well as both of them have distance and also some topspin uh, to the abilities of the, their clubs. So as you can see here though, even though if we max overpower and going with the topspin that we do have, we will not be able to reach for the green in two. The big dog might, 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 it's going to be very, very tough. But as you can see here, we're going to play ourselves up short, going for the wedge shot, which is still an opportunity. So don't be mad at yourself just because you can't reach for this green in two. And I would, I can promise you that if we're not having tailwind in the tournament or having just a low tailwind, then we will see still a bunch, bunch of player, players to uh, just lay up and try to uh, sink a wedge from distance for an eagle. But you know, in the end, we always want to try to reach for the green in two. And if you have tailwind, I would definitely go for a max overpower shot with my uh, big dog, depending on how far I did reach on the first fairway. And that is also something to have in mind with this hole, that your drive kind of decides uh, a big uh, amount as well. So if you do go short with your drive in tailwind, then you will definitely not reach for the green in two. You kind of need to find yourself in a situation where uh, having tailwind with your drive would put yourself as close to the rough on to uh, and water as possible there without being in the rough. And that, of course, gives you more distance for your second shot and it's going to be uh, an opportunity to reach for the green in two. But again, uh, I'm very 50-50 because it depends on the win that we're going to have in the tournament. Uh, and also it depends in general if you're going to play this hole in a regular tour play. It definitely depends on the wind, uh, how you're going to uh, 
progress and play this hole. So we take the wedge here and we're going to try to ship it in. We're going to miss it slightly, uh, but in the end we had an opportunity and that is all that counts on this very top par 5. So this was the playthrough for Rookie Division with various wins. So have in mind this is not the tournament win. The, play the playthrough for Rookie is going to be, be out on Monday with the tournament win because the tournament starts on Monday. If you do have any questions, please make a comment in the comment section below and I will be happy to answer you there. If you do want to get more specific help, check out Team Golf Clash Tommy on Facebook or Golf Clash United on Facebook or patreon.com slash golf clash Tommy. The video is sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic and I want here in the end to wish you the best amount of luck in the Origin Links tournament.